<laughs> hey guys, welcome to the <laughs> welcome to Notorious Women Podcast. I'm Lavetta. I'm Miriam. And this is Notorious Women, a comedy podcast about some of history's most notorious women. Yes. Okay, so Lavetta is calling me sexy. Why? Because all I just did was reach my arms up and stretch. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all, I'm tired. <laughs> Her se- she's she's a uh, if if we had a picture, it'd be a thirst trap. Okay. That's what we call a thirst trap, girl. <laughs> oh, you guys, Shall she's just hitting on me. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> uh, if only, if know, only. Right? Right. Um, let's get started, darling. I because I'm very excited about telling you about uh, my notorious woman this week. Okay. Uh, because I believe I'm first, and I yes, actually think we got it. We messed up the order, or I messed up the order. <gasps> I think Vetta. last week I was supposed to go first. <laughs> Girl, did we mess up the order? I think wow. so. So you're going to see through our facade of having it together. <laughs> <Whew>. <laughs> I've been telling y'all it's lies. It's all lies. Mm-hmm. Oh, Girl, yeah. I just look to you for all things. What's happening? I I was editing it and I was like, oh, shoot. I think you messed up. <laughs> I messed okay. up because I told you I thought Listen, you were first. I forgive you. Okay. If that does that help? It does. OK. Hopefully all the right. audience will forgive us. I don't know. <laughs> Oh, I don't know, girl. Well, let's see. Well, let's get started. This week, okay. I am first. I'm sure first, you are. First. Uh, <laughs> mine, mine, mine. From okay, girl. Finding Nemo. Um, okay, so <laughs> I'm very excited about this week, Miriam. Okay. My Lovetta. notorious woman. My is? notorious woman for this week is uh-huh. Magdalena Solis. Do you know who Magdalena Solis is? I just feel like that triggers a memory, but the honest answer is no <laughs> okay well let me tell you about a little bit well first off let me mm. back up mm-hmm. to petrifus okay. 1963 is it sicily May- okay no go on <laughs> <laughs> go the girls reference got it yes okay <laughs> okay it was so the 19- night of it was the night of in may it was a night in uh, may 1963 huh? okay a 14-year-old local resident, res- resident, resident. You got this. You speak good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I speak a good English. I'm so proud. Uh, okay. That's a terrible accent. Mm. Uh, mm. Of nothing, actually. <laughs> I, I don't know. Is it Mario Brothers? Is it like... Yeah, no, it's like the spoof of Mario Brothers. It's okay. like the SNL spoof of Mario Brothers, which I highly recommend. Side note. Okay. 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 So <laughs> it's night. It's May 1963 in Mexico. Okay. Um, and this 14-year-old boy by the name of Sebastian Guerrero, uh-huh. he wanders. He's wandering near the cave. So this isn't a very rural part of Mexico, like the, the basically the country. We call this like the boondocks, right? All That's right. what we call it. Part of uh Mexico. He's near some caves. He's just you know he's 14, so he's doing what young men do. Uh, when he comes across this really weird sort of like, I guess it's just a, it's a, a ritual of some kind. He hears light, he's, he sees lights and he hears noises. Um, and so it's at night. So he can see it from a distance. It kind of reminds me of, uh, the description of this when I was, uh, researching it. Basically the scene in Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Oh man, that's been a few years since I've seen that. Yes. Yeah, so it was basically kind of like, he sees lights and he goes and he hears noises. So he goes into another part of these caves and he goes in and he sees, he silently watches a person being slaughtered by a group of people. Oh my God. So this was not the witch ritual I was envisioning. No. Okay. No. Okay. And Ooh. it's near, he was, and the name of the town is Yorba Yur, Buena. Yorba Buena. Buena. Right. Okay. So he, so he freaks out. And again, he's 14 years old. He runs back. Uh, to the town of Vila Grande, which is near, it's about 25 kilometers, uh, which is, what is 25 kilometers? Oh, she's got to do math, you guys, everybody. Uh, you know. Because we're Americans and do, we don't. Do, uh, do, 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 do. 
So it's about a little bit, uh, it's a little bit over a mile, a little bit in a mile. So it's not too far, right? So he runs back, uh, but again, he just saw this terrible thing. So he runs back to the nearest town and he tells, he goes to the police station and he tells them what he saw. And he he says, it's a group of murderers and they're preying on uh, a, a, a human being. They're killing him and they're drinking his blood. Oh my God. Oh my yeah. God. Huh. So it sounds ridiculous. And because it sounds ridiculous, the cops are like, ha, 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 ha. you <laughs> fool. They're like, they started clowning him. Like, and he's like, no, I'm telling you, this is like, I saw this. And they're like, oh, the boy's obviously on drugs. Something's wrong. He's a street kid, whatever. Like a lot of incompetent cops do. They just, uh, chalk it up to he's just halluc- he's just been an asshole or he doesn't know what he's doing and he's just raving lunatic something's wrong with it right so okay then the next morning uh, an officer by the name of luis martinez uh takes the boy home and okay. but before he goes home he's like well take me to this place that you say you saw these quote-unquote vampires because the boy's like vampires right right and so he so they go towards the place Neither one of them are seen alive again. What? So because an officer is now disappeared, the police start thinking, huh, I mean, maybe there's something about this vampire. I mean, surely it can't be vampires, but maybe there's something going on. You know, because, you know, Mexican culture are, you know, they uh, believe in the, you know, the afterlife, the spirit world. They're thinking maybe some dark shit going on, basically. Some, some voodoo, their version of voodoo, basically going. Right? Okay, so, so not like sick- an episode of Buffy or anything. Okay, no, no. yeah, okay. So on um, a few days later, on May thirty first, nineteen sixty three, the police, because again, an officer has disappeared. Right. They laughed at this kid. The officer goes away with the kid, and then they both disappear. So on May thirty first, nineteen sixty three, okay. the police, in conjunction with the army, deploy an operation to Yerba Buena, and they descend upon this place. And there's a gunfire. It's like a shootout. It's like something out of a movie. At the end of it, when all of this clears, at least six people are dead. And oh a woman God. by the name of Magdalena Solis and her brother Elazar are arrested and eventually sent to prison. Okay? So okay. let's rewind. What? So, okay. So that's May of 1963. So let's rewind a little bit uh, for the previous year uh, in 1962 and early 1963, where we find brothers Santos and Cayetano Hernandez. So Santos and Cayetano, okay. they're basically a, a bunch of petty criminals. You know, who knows? They, they could have been orphans on the street, so they have to kind of scam and, and find a way to make a living, eat out a living. Uh, who knows? Or maybe they're just petty criminals um so they're having money problems they're trying to come up with a gimmick gotta have a gimmick right gotta get a gimmick so they they enter the town of yerba buena and they figure out now again yerba buena is very small very very small it's like the boondocks it's like a small boondocks town of a small town well okay it's in northern uh, mexico and the town technically only has about 50 people who live there. What? Yeah. So this is, again, it's a it's the boondocks of a small town. <laughs> so Santos and Cayetano come up with this thing where they're going to dupe the, the local people. They're, mo- they're very, very poor and they're mostly illiterate. So they decide to run a scam. Basically, they're snake oil salesmen who come to town and say that they are prophets. And hi- they, they are basically reincarnated Incan gods. Okay. Okay. That's a gimmick. I can yeah, get it's a gimmick. That. It's the same thing as like a, a preacher man come into a small town. Yeah, I can make it God. rain. Yeah. Right. Again, Incan and, and uh, Mayan, uh, th- that, these are the indigenous uh, cultures of this area, of, of this part of the world. Okay. So yeah. they convince the local town people. Again, it's only about 50 people in this small, small town. That's like a family. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So they basically convince them that if they work for them and worship them, they will bless them with unhi- with hidden treasures that are uh, hidden in the caves and the mountains in the surrounding village. So again, this is a small, small boondock village of a small town. Okay. So 
they do a bunch of they basically do a bunch of cons where they do performative acts that seem like rituals to the town people to the town's people it's like yeah, i made people, it rain and i was like pouring water that i bought in the other town yeah okay. exactly it's Yeet. it's the sink oil salesman it's like it you know in the uh northern part of it in north america we we're used to this like in the wild west or like the midwest like the old like you know uh prairie where you see the snake oil salesman i mean they've made musicals about it the music yeah. man you know all yeah. this no, stuff, like right? i feel like i've seen it in 19 different iterations exactly so they come so they they do basically a bunch of sleight of hand tricks to get to convince the people that they are gods and again they say <laughs> if you worship us we will bless you with untold treasures that are buried we, we will tell you where to dig for these treasures lavetta we're in the wrong business this is genius I, I'm telling you, if you don't have any <laughs> contests, you can make a lot of money. You know what I mean? Damn yeah. soul. All right. So the people basically fall for this. But in this, you know, and of course, when you're doing this kind of ruse, you have to set up like the non-believers, right? The non-believers right. must be punished. Mm. Oh, yeah. It's a whole thing. So because the believers are like, if you don't, we all have to believe or it won't come true. So you must be punished, right? We have to, uh, we have to appease the gods, right? And these Always. are the, yeah. So it worked. It worked like a charm. Okay. 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 Now, what's even more remarkable about this ruse is that this con, basically, is that the Hernandez brothers were barely literate themselves, just a marginally more literate than the townspeople, because the more accurate thing would to say that they were uh, from the Aztec. Oh, because, wow. <laughs> yes. That, yeah, it wouldn't have been more logical. Because, so they didn't even know their own, like, uh, That's hilarious. Lore. That's yeah. hilarious. I always say, you know, if you want to be a perpetual liar, I've run into a few in my life, you've got to get your facts straight first. Sit yeah. down, make a list, do some research, and then go off and con everybody. You know what I'm saying? But do you? Because you have to know your audience. And and apparently they knew their audience because it still worked. It worked. Uh, that's a now, good point. So they're basically like, we're God. So bring us the, the, the small food that you have. You know, the small amount of food that you have. Bring it to us. But also they started to demand sexual taxes. Oh, these bastards. From both men and women. Okay. So yeah. equal opportunity. Hey. You know. Yeah. No yeah, judgment yeah. there. Not there. It's the no. sex part. It's, it's that, the sex. Yep. That's the part. That's the part. Yep. That's the problem. Yeah. That's the problem. And Boy, as you boys, can imagine, like, zip it up, y'all. Just zip it's, it up. Come zip on. Zip it up. Of course. The, the sex always follows. Always. Right. Especially when cis men are involved. So. Um, now, as you can imagine, some of the town folks are like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, so to get them in the mood, <laughs> a Lord. they gave them a little peyote, little okay. drugs, okay. To, you know. So they basically started a sex cult uh, uh -huh. and an organized, fueled, and they would have organized orgies on the regular. <laughs> as long as it was organized, you know? See, what? I could have stopped at the food and money and then like skedaddled out of town. But not these go guys. Ahead. Not the Hernandez Like for real, brothers. like go ahead and try to take my food away from me. Like That's go it. ahead and see what happens. It's not going to be pretty. Of course. So it worked for a while. But after a while, the people are like, especially they're like, I don't want to do I don't want to do the sex stuff no more. They started getting, they're like, well, where are the, where's the gold? Where are the treasures? Yeah, right. When are we going to see it? Mm -hmm. So the Fernandez brothers are like, okay, we got to come up. We got to escalate. <laughs> we got to heighten. <laughs> right? Yeah. We got to come up. We got to. Uh, okay. I, again, I was scammed and then left town, but not the Hernandez brothers are like, we don't set up shop here. So they I have know, to like, escalate. Like, yo, take, take, the, take the money and the food and off to the next town with 50 people. Come no. on. Big mistake. No. So All right. they're like, we got to figure something out. So around this time, they go back into the slightly larger town and they run into magdalena solis and her brother okay. elazar who agreed to join this con team this car this scammer team okay so so with magdalena and elazar on board the hernandez brothers expanded the belief system because again when you're coming up the cult you got to right. expand the belief system yep so yep. then they so then they came up with this new trick 
where they would do a bunch of uh, basically they just created smoke, <laughs> like literal <laughs> smoke and introduce Magdalena as a reincarnation of a goddess. Uh, of course they did. That feels Again, right. Reminds me of Indiana Jones. I wonder <laughs> if that's where they got this idea from. You know what? Uh, Maybe. <laughs> yeah. So they, and again, the people are high on peyote. It also reminds me of the Charles Manson uh, cult because oftentimes those, uh, and not to make excuses for what they did, but oftentimes it would be orgies and a lot of drugs because these kids were also homeless and in, in the quote unquote, the Manson family. I mean, um, that's how, that's a great way to suck people in is to mess great, with their cognitive abilities. And people are know? desperate. So they yeah. obviously, and it's just so it's such a shame. So Magdalena was like, okay, this, so apparently it worked. So they're like, oh, a goddess. Because again, this is, a, this is a heightening of the, the scam. Right. Now, shortly after joining this this con, uh, this long con, uh, Magdalena uh, she took to it like a, a, a flea to a dog. Uh, oh, okay. She, so again, the, the sexual exploitive tactics, the, the demanding of food and and just bring us and serve us is, is already here. But um, Magdalena's like, you know what? I need, I'm going to need, uh, when we, when we like punish the unbelievers, we're going to need some blood. Um, oh. We're going to need to drink some blood. We're going to need to spill some blood. Uh, because the blood is where the power is. Magdalena, girl. Yeah. Okay. So, especially because after she shows up, that works for like maybe a week. And then the people are like, so nothing shit. Where's the gold? Yeah. <laughs> like, I still I have empty pockets and where's I'm hungry because you took my food. food so, <laughs> and she's like, unbeliever. Ah, oh, you're the reason this is not happening. What shall we do with this non believer? <laughs> oh, I know. Oh, shit. Let's string them up, start to bleed them. Oh my god! And then mix that with chicken blood, Ew. and then we all drink from it while we're high on marijuana and peyote. It's a party! It's a party! Wow! Yes, yes. Yes. yes, I would be the first to be strung up and bled, just to be clear. Because I mean, that would be me. I'd be like, "Yo, I don't buy this," and no, she would I be don't... like, "Cool, let's no. do this." Never say that you're not. You don't believe it. Just leave. No. Just skedaddle. Under yeah. the cover of night. Never tell a <laughs> cult leader that you think they full of shit. Because it's Got not it. going to go well. Okay. So, G- thanks for the advice. Yeah. Good, so, good. and also, again, with any cult, with any good cult, originally it was the Hernandez brothers that were the head of it. But when she came aboard, she's like, no, I'm the head priestess. Uh-huh. Me and my brother. And then there's my brother. And then it's the Hernandez brothers. And then, you know, you also pluck a few people from the town's people. You give them a little bit of power. Yeah, that's how it's done. That's how it's done. So she, she, she started to believe her own bullshit. She really started to believe that she was the reincarnated uh, Aztec goddess, Coatico, Coatico. No, sure. Coat Liku, Coat uh-huh. Liku. I Sounds believe that's good. how I'm sure that's not right, but Coat <laughs> Liku. <laughs> I'll buy it. It's fine. That's what she said. So about th- by this time, again, we're we're back up to where we started at the beginning of the story. We are in May of 1963. Now, from the time Wait, that uh, this has Magdalena been going on for came on years, over, right? Well, no, actually, the brothers came up with this idea in late 1962. Okay, so, so like, yeah, not even so a then, okay. yeah, not even, it's a very, very short time. Okay. After Magdalena gets there, it goes on for about six weeks until the young boy sees them in the caves. So, the, they go from just being a sex cult, wanting money, to being a sex bloodthirsty death cult oh, to the non-believers in six weeks wow that's how that's how fast it went yeah okay. so again so yeah. sebastian the young man in the beginning he happens upon the ritual oh, excuse me one night so again we wind back he goes to the police they laugh at him then an officer goes up and they and then they disappear 
So uh-huh. on May 31st, the officers, again, with the army, they go into Yerba Buena. They, again, there's a shootout. <gasps> uh, they find tons of marijuana. Yeah. Um, and But they also find a bunch of dirty people who are covered in, like, blood. Uh, oh. uh, they also find a couple dead bodies that yeah. have been stoned and their Oof. hearts had been cut out of their bodies. Oh, my God. Ah! But they also find a few dedicated members who exchange fire with the authorities. Dang. Yeah. And some people gave up. Some people were like, oh, thank God. And some people were like, no, you take me. Liberty or death. <laughs> Cult or death. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so the people that they did kill, they managed to actually arrest a lot of people. Santos Hernandez was shot by uh cops while resi- I mean they say resisting arrest but we know sometimes how cops mm-hmm. are right um uh, Cayetano uh he had already been killed by one of the members because remember when I said about like you give a few of the members a uh, little bit of power status yeah. mm-hmm. well there was one member by the name of Jesus Rubio who wanted to be part of the inner circle he and, didn't know his place I guess well he kept being strung along by Cayetano who kept promising mm-hmm. him that he would bring them in he never did so that guy which i think is a very interesting story that even amongst this insanity petty grievances led to somebody being killed by another member yeah (laughs) within like two to three months all this insanity happened it's like crazy within crazy within crazy crazy and so they arrest uh magdalena solis and her brother it's Um, probably good yeah and they so Authorities arrest everybody. Then they start combing the area and investigating. And they do find up the carved bodies of Sebastian Guerrero and Luis Martinez, no. the officer that had taken them there. Yeah. I'm sad. Near, near a farm that the uh, uh, Solis, that uh, Magdalena and the Hernandez brothers had uh, uh, basically confiscated in this area. So, wow. you know, and again, they, when you have a cult, you basically have an army. To go yes. out and do your bidding. Yes. Yeah. And the, the taking out of the heart, they said, was part of an Aztec sacrifice. May okay. or may not be true, but the people don't really know. Again, you're kind of trapped unless, again, you sneak away in the uh, cover of night, which is what I would do because uh-huh. Seven, uh-huh. I'm a coward. I'm a bit of a coward, but I am practical. Yeah. You know what? It's not cowardly. That's intelligence. Yeah. That's just intelligence, it's like knowing your situation and adjusting accordingly. I think that's yeah. perfectly fair. Yeah. They also find, authorities also find six bodies that have been dismembered. Oh, God. Really? In the vicinity and spread throughout the caves in the Ugh. vicinity. Okay. Now, the trial was very short, as you can imagine. Yeah. Uh, Magdalena and her brother Elizar were sentenced to 50 years in prison. For only two homicides, that of Guerrero and Martinez. So that of the young boy and the officer. They were not able because they were not able to confirm their participation Mm. in the other six murders because what's cult leader 101? Get other people to do the killing. Yep. It's in the first chapter of the book. Get other (laughs) people to do the killing. So they so they were sentenced to 50 years. And eventually, when all the the smoke kind of cleared, some of the cult members, uh, the jury kind of took pity on the cult members because, again, these are very, very poor people. These are poor people among poor people. Yeah. In like a town of 50 people. So those who were arrested and who were unrepentant were sentenced to 30 years for six counts of murder because it was a group gang murder and lynching. Yep. Um, but those who seem repentant and confused and ashamed, uh, because again, these are very illiterate and poor people. You know, a lot of the people, uh, some of the, so the jury took pity on some of these people and let them back out into society. Uh, later on, ex cult members, they would speak more intimately about the horrors that they encountered over this short period of time. Yeah. And, I can't even imagine the mixture of shame. And, you know, also just to back up a little bit, it was, it's been reported in some of the sources that Magdalena and her brother were, had an incestuous relationship. 
Who? I mean, you um, know what? After all that she has done and inspired, sure, why not? That feels right. You know? And she herself and Elazar were extremely poor. She was actually engaged in sex work uh, from oh. a very young age. Some people think that it was her brother who got her into it when she was about nine. Ugh. Because these are very poor, poor people. So it's a, it's almost like poor, illiterate people who get a little bit of power and they're like, I'm in charge. So let me also then victimize those that I'm over now. So I think there's right. a little bit of that psychology that's going on. Because again, Magdalena was not uh, literate either, uh, but she was charismatic. Right. And if she had been working, had been forced into sex work at such a young age, she had to grow up really, really fast. And then if she's having, again, this is uh, allegedly that mm, her mm. and her brother may or may not have had an incestuous relationship because that would explain and I would imagine probably with the Hernandez brothers because these are like orphans, urchins, quote unquote, yeah. that are forced on the street. We don't know about where their parents were. We don't know uh, their parents may have died and they're on the street and they're just trying to make it. And again, they find a little bit of like a little power and they're like, yeah, they get drunk with it. I mean, it's almost, I don't want y'all to take this the wrong way, almost impressive. Like, don't be crazy and do crazy ass cult things to murder people. But I would just like cry, you know, like they just went there, you know, they went off yeah. the deep end. Whew. Because like, well, it's also like when you grow up like that, it's a dog eat dog world. Yeah. And you're like, I guess I got to eat. I got to like, eat damn, now. So. Like they went there, like they pulled a heart out. You know what I'm saying? Like, again, like I would just like roll up in a ball and cry, I think. And like, just be sad. But wow. Wow. I mean, I, I would imagine you have to have a little bit of uh, mental illness going on there. You know, I would like say more than a little. Yeah. 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 So. I mean, that is the story of Magdalena Solis. <laughs> I told you I had a doozy. <laughs> I yeah, you did. my life. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, my Lord. So, okay. That is Watch my me notorious try to sleep woman. Tonight. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, thanks a lot for those nightmares. Appreciate oh, it. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Oh, thank you. So who's your notorious woman this okay, week so for me? My notorious woman this week is... A little known woman named E. Jean Carroll. Does that sound familiar to you? Because it might. She's been in the news lately. No, I, it does sound vaguely familiar. Okay, me. then we're, we're going to go on this journey together. Here we okay. go. Okay. Okay. So Elizabeth Jean Carroll was born in 1943 in Detroit, Michigan. Uh, they called her Jeannie. Okay. Her father was an inventor. Her mother was a politician in Allen County, Indiana. So she was the oldest okay. of four kids, and she was raised in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Um, she went to Indiana University. She was a Pi Beta Phi, which I think is like a cool sorority, which means something that I don't know. But that's all I have to say about that. And she was a cheerleader. She was crowned Miss Indiana University in 1963. Oh. Um, and in 1964, uh, as a representative of the university, she won the Miss Cheerleader USA title. She also appeared on the, do you remember this show, like old, the, the show To Tell the Truth in 1965? I, and my re research of other, uh, like, uh, Hedda Hopper. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, I know that show is what I'm saying. Yes. Yes. Um, so, okay. So she uh, lived in Montana with her first husband, uh, Steve Byers. Uh, but they, I don't, I don't really know when they got married, but they divorced in 1984. And then her second marriage was to John Johnson, um, an anchorman, an artist, and they divorced in 1990. Um, she she married became, an anchor man. Yes, she did. And she was a journalist in New York City. Okay. Can you imagine marrying Will Ferrell <laughs> from Anchorman? <laughs> I can't. It's the mustache. I can't. Oh, I got it. So funny. So she had a column in L. You remember, you know, L Magazine? 
um, called Ask E. Jean from 1993 until 2020. It was widely read and acclaimed for her opinions on sex, her insistence that women should never, never structure their lives around men, and her compassion for letter writers experiencing difficult life situations. Yes. Um, so, right? This girl right here. So when it debuted, Amy Gross, who was a former editor and she's editor-in-chief of Elle, she compared the column to putting her on a bucking bronco, that's in quotes, describing her responses to readers as, quote, the cheers and whoops and hollers of a fearless woman having a good old time. So they called her writing style, which was like full of humor, as quirky, cheeky, and irreverent. No, I like this. So she also wrote for Saturday Night Live in the mid 1980s, no. which was a solid time for SNL. I gotta yeah. say, yeah. Um, she was nominated for an Emmy for outstanding v- writing in a variety or music program in 1987. Wow. Um, so that she had this like she just did. It sounds like she did all the things she wanted to do, and she did it successfully. So from 1994 to 1996, she was the host and producer of the Ask E. Jean television series that aired on NBC's America's Talking, which was the predecessor to MSNBC. No. Entertainment Weekly called her the most entertaining cable talk show host you will never see. Carol in the show, they were nominated, the, the show and her were nominated for a Cable Ace Award in 1995. So she also wrote a ton of things for a, for The Atlantic, for Vanity Fair, for Esquire, Outside, for Playboy. She was actually Playboy's first female contributing editor. Okay. She okay. was known, this is, this is what I read. She was known for her gonzo style first person narratives. I'm assuming that's a reference to Gonzo from the Muppets, which I love very much. <laughs> very very much me too um so she like hiked into the star mountains with an at balman tracker and a telephoman warrior i don't 100 percent know what that means but it sounds cool okay so she but she because she went kind of everywhere to do to to explore all kinds of lives so she chronicled um, lives of basketball groupies in a story called Love in the Time of Magic. This was interesting. So she went to Indiana to investigate why four white farm kids were thrown out of school for dressing like black artists in uh, an essay called The Return of the White Negro. She oh. tracked yeah, okay, wait, uh-huh. wait, wait, wait. I got questions. <laughs> yeah. Oh well you have questions. So where right. is where is there <laughs> Was there blackface? Tolar. See, I don't, I don't know. I couldn't really like, I don't, I didn't, pro- I'm going to go with yes. I'm just going to say that if they did that in the 90s, okay, in Indiana, then yes. The white Negro. Okay. Yeah. I've now never listen, heard of Maybe I'm that. wrong. It's an alleged yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but. The white Negro. Okay. Yeah. 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 Do you need a minute? I feel like that's fair. Yeah. <laughs> I, because it sounds like, like, obviously she has comedy chops. So it's like, was that tongue in cheek? Was a satire, but white no, Negro? I've knowing never... about her, I think it's a satire. I think I that. I mean, that is, we say wigger, but so this preceded no, that. I, but I did not know that. Oh, yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. 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 Yeah, oh, my wow. uh, one of my friends who's uh, not American, who's black, but who's not American, got mad at me when I said that. I was like, what? That's like, yeah, <laughs> that's what it's called. <laughs> it's like, Just what it is. Welcome to yeah. America. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know it when you see it. It's like corn. Mm-hmm. But, but I digress. Um, Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, another thing she did, like, I, I'm saying all this stuff because it's all so different and random. Yeah. She, check this out. She tracked down her old boyfriends and moved in with them and their wives, like, and stayed with them for a bit. She also went on a camping trip with Fran Lebowitz. Um, so uh, Bill Tonelli, just- so her Esquire and Rolling Stone editor, said in a 1999 interview that all of her stories were, quote, pretty much the same thing, which is 
what is this person like when he or she is in a room with E. Jean? She's <laughs> institutionally incapable of being uninteresting. Now, I like to think of myself in that way, too, but I don't. I, I think I'm the only one who likes to think of myself as that way, too, <laughs> which at least there's one, right? <laughs> It's all so random. Like, it, wow. Yeah. Right. Like, where are we going with this? OK, so she's also written a lot of works that have been included in nonfiction anthologies. She's won several awards for them. I'm not going to go like into detail. It's cool. Um, you can look it up. She in 1993, she wrote a biography of Hunter S. Thompson called Hunter, the Strange and Savage Life of Hunter S. Thompson. In 2002, Who's Hunter, Hunter Thompson, he was like in a, he was like, um, okay, well, you know what? It's totally possible. I'm mixing him up with someone, but I think he was one of the, the, um, on the road guys, not Jack Kerouac, but I think he explored with freedom. I don't know. You know oh, what? Is he's like, a man. Is he- is it like he's a, a man. white man that's like, oh, let me go out and see the yeah. wild world of, of non-whiteness is he that because is he i that have like guy? white privilege i can act like the world is my oyster because it is one of those okay. guys but i think he was a good guy i think he did a lot of drugs i'm oh, okay. making things up lying to you no idea look him up <laughs> all right he's a man so we don't care listen she wrote a book all about him so go find the book right she's cool okay. i support her so in 2002 this is awesome she co-founded greatboyfriends.com with her sister, Candy Carroll. So on the site, women recommended their ex-boyfriends to each other. Did you know about this? No. Okay. So great boyfriends. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? It was acquired if by- a you great know, the- boyfriend, you want to keep him to yourself in case you want to mm. circle back around. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Like, listen, I might come back to that. Yeah. I mean, right? If he's that great, listen, she sold it. The not.com. Remember the not or the not incorporated? I know the not because that was the website I used when I was getting married in the year 2005, which is when they acquired it, actually. Okay. Okay. In 2004, she launched catch27.com, which was a spoof of Facebook. So on the site, and I feel like I remember this, people would put their profiles on trading cards and bought, sold, and traded each other. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, you know, and I looked what? at that Hunter guy. He's They said gonzo journalism. So basically, it's like what Nellie Bly did back in the day, like with serious journalism, like going undercover and oh, yeah. being, in, being embedded with people. Gonzo journalism is like being embedded with like Hell's Angels or like oh, okay, this kind yeah. of thing. So it's like, that's why it seems so random. It's like going underground. Okay. She's so, I mean, to me, that's very, very brave. She like looks at what might be like. To I, me, it I, sounds exhausting. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, I would exhausting. never do it. But I mean, I feel like this gave her life. Like this was like, yeah, I God think bless she her. loved it. Um, so she, she lost, she launched an online version of her column, askegene.com in 2007. Um, and then in 2017, around then, she co-founded Talkify, which was a personal concierge for dating. I don't know if that's still around. Oh, I've never okay. heard of it. Patty so, Sanger, move, move over, huh? Right, <laughs> right. Um, so she's working, she's doing her thing. Um, in the late 1990s an incident of sexual assault occurred to her in a hotel elevator with Les Moonves. Now, I don't know how to say this guy's name, but you've seen him like on the news. He was a CBS corporate executive. She had interviewed him for a story and then got into a hotel elevator and she was, uh, she allegedly was sexually assaulted by him. In 2019, Years later, she was one of 13 women who accused him. He obviously denied the accusation. So if you look up, if you look him up, he has paid off so many women millions of dollars 
so many, like hundreds of millions of dollars. And I read that the money that he used to pay them off came from CBS itself and that he donated his money to like um, the Me Too movement. <laughs> oh, yeah. And just for people who don't know who aren't in the industry, Les Moonbez is very, very powerful head yes. of CBS. Uh, very, very powerful. Former actor turned uh, studio exec. So. Yes. Um, and then after CBS did fire him or network of, exec, of I course, get he started another company in 2019. So, you know, don't worry. This. Oh, um, yeah. And his golden parachute was how much? <laughs> it was five like, gazillion dollars. Yeah. So. Oh, no. Yeah. Allegedly. Yeah. Allegedly. Allegedly. And I, think, I believe people also said allegedly Les Mouvez, uh had a, a personal grievance against Janet Jackson. Like he's the reason that they went after Janet Jackson so hard for the uh, oh. the the wardrobe yeah, the, malfunction, mm -hmm. like. But he purposefully wanted to take down the woman, wanted to that take feels down. Right. Yeah, that That's, feels right. Yeah, that feels I, allegedly again, it's right. Alleged, allegedly, exactly. Uh -huh. I yeah. allegedly agree. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> many alleged. So here we go. And June 21st in 2019, she published an article in New York Magazine, which stated that Donald Trump had sexually assaulted her in the late 1995, early 1996. Oh, now and, I know who this woman is. Yeah, okay. now you know who she yeah. is. Uh, in the Bergdorf department store in New York City. She further detailed the alleged incident. Uh, in her book, What Do We Need Men For? A Modest Proposal. <laughs> I thought you would like the name. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're cackling internally. I know, right? Or externally. <laughs> <laughs> um, so she said, as m maybe we've read recently, that she was on her way out of the store. She ran into him. He had asked her help buying a gift for a woman. She suggested a handbag or a hat. They joked around, moved to a lingerie section, joked about trying some on. I won't go into details. Then they ended up in a dressing room and she allegedly alleges that he sexually assaulted her. Um, he denied wow. everything. He claimed he had never met her. She provided a New York... She provided... Um, uh, magazine and the New Yorker, I think, or I, and one of those, a photograph of her socializing with him in 1987. And of course, he dismissed the photograph's significance. But also, she, like, you know, she's a high profile woman. Yes. <laughs> like, like, so it's not like she's like an unknown. This is obviously a high profile writer. So, like, yes. You've never met her. I okay. mean, really? Because here we are at a gala, <laughs> asshole. Yeah. Um, so her, she originally d chose not to describe the alleged assault as rape and described it as a fight. Quote, my word is Dang. fight. My word is not the victim word. I fought. Um, which I, I get. Now, ha let me just say this. Yeah. Um, it should oh. be noted that this woman is basically like a, adventurous writer, gonzo journalism. She's been embedded with probably some wild, crazy people. And that that's anxiety I had listening to you at first because I'm thinking that sounds like it sounds exciting to her, but I'm like, that sounds like it's a lot of sleeping on the street or in, in, in tunnels underneath bridges. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, like that sounds exhausting to me. So, and, and I can see, yeah, I can see but, where she thought I'm in a, public place with a man i've run into several times well not even that she has never she didn't have this issue the fear of sexual assault when she's in more dangerous like maybe on the street maybe around right. you know uh addicts maybe around people who are more destitute and desperate who who are supposed to be more violent quote unquote according right. to society she gets assaulted by mm -hmm. wealthy upscale uh, businessmen who supposedly come from good homes and good families in public places in an elevator and in a high-end department store. This yep. is where she gets assaulted. Okay. This is All right. right. Allegedly. Like all, allegedly. She, 
All the things your mama tells you not to do, right? Don't sleep outside with strangers. She was fine. She was fine. Yeah. This was the problem. So, Interesting. Um, so in November of ni- uh, November 2019, she filed a defamation lawsuit with the New York Supreme Court. Uh, and it stated that Trump had damaged her reputation, substantially harmed her professionally and caused emotional pain. She stated, quote, Decades ago, the now president of the United States raped me. When I had the courage to speak out about the attack, he defamed my character, accused me of lying for personal gain, even insulted my appearance. She stated that, uh, unquote, and then she said that she was, quote, filing this lawsuit on behalf of every woman who has ever been harassed, assaulted, silenced, or spoken up, only to be shamed, fired, and ridiculed and belittled. Amen. So, that's yes, right, girl. Girl. That's right. Uh, the White House press secretary, Stephanie Grisham, ooh, yeah, I remember her, described the suit as frivolous and claimed her story was fraudulent. Cool. She was fired from L February 2020. Now, she wrote on Twitter that she was dismissed because, quote, because Trump ridiculed my reputation, laughed at my looks, and dragged me through the mud, unquote. Elle maintained that the decision to fire her was a business decision unrelated to Trump. Alleged, 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 alleged. Oh, uh, this poor yeah. woman. Also, because, you know, this is why people who are assaulted go through this horrible thing are afraid to speak up, particularly yeah. if the person has any kind of status or power. Yeah. You know, it's the ridicule. And then, you know, I hate when people are like, well, she doesn't look hot. So only like really hot, sexy women. Uh, and again, this was years earlier, but only they get assaulted. No, 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 no. And it's one of the tactics. looks or sex. It's yeah, about Yeah, one of the tactics power. is like, let me, because this happened 30 years ago. Let me show you a picture of her now. Let me, you know, like this was 30 years ago. A, B, people do this shit to all kinds of people. Yep. This is exactly what you said about power. Like we need, yeah. Like that it's narrative that, has to get back into the zeitgeist. Uh. Yeah, it's men who are like, "Let me show you. You just a piece of ass, right? Like you just a piece of ass. What do you care? Like, let me get my jollies off. Like, it's I just, mean, what did he say? And that it could was, be any woman. That's the tragedy. What was of it. that quote? Happened to you? Yeah, Which grab one? grab him by the pussy. Is that what, yeah? Like, yeah, like he. But people said, don't understand the nature of sexual assault by victimizers like it is it's not about the individual woman it's not about how hot she is or how hot she's not it's about the woman that whatever woman's there <laughs> like it's, I it's mean, not yeah yeah it's like and that's the tragedy of it because it happens to the woman and it's personal to her uh or the or the person that it happens to but to the abuser it's like you could be anybody you just well, happen to be there and I will say, I'll take a moment. So on, you guys listen to this latest episode. It's not the latest episode because this comes out, but like a recent episode of This American Life. She is interviewing another woman about like they are both, they both have allegations against Donald Trump and they talk about, it's really fascinating. It, it's, it's in she taught and one woman talks about how some like she feels like he's bored like i can't it's mm-hmm. it, it's bizarre but the the point those two women are hashtag goals in terms of like such strong powerful funny amazing who have been through the ringer and are still strong powerful funny interesting yeah. it's yeah, really exactly. i like that was that was my inspire i listened to it and i went we gotta talk about her Oh, because that. she's so high in the news right now that I was like, let's talk about who who she is and what she's done and how she's a badass, not just for this, but just like her whole life. Um, yeah, I didn't realize she was so accomplished. I didn't. Yeah. I didn't know what. I didn't know who she was or, or how you know she came sort of about. Um, okay, so the trial was up and down. They were through. Lots of things happened. I, we. Finally, I'm going to cut to the chase. 
you know, because he was trying to hide that. Well, I was once president, so you can't sue me now. Um, but then they were like, yeah, she can, though. So November 24th, 2022, she sued him for battery in New York under the Adult Survivors Act, which was a law that was passed the previous May that briefly allows sexual assault victims to file civil suits regardless of expired statutes of limitations. So she made a renewed claim of defamation, citing statements Trump made in October. In February 2023, scheduled the trial was scheduled for April 25th, basically like four minutes ago, right? On May 9th, 2023, a jury of six men and three women found Trump liable for sexual assault, battery, and defamation. On the issue of rape, the jury found that Carol had not proved by a preponderance of evidence that is a law thing that's a law thing um yeah but she, and also so, it's hard to prove rape like it's this really many hard years. to prove that years and years later years but also and years even and years. E- also unless even like when it just happens it's, it's really hard to prove but it's certainly yeah. decades later so um but yeah. she was awarded as maybe you all know already five million dollars in damages Five million dollars. Five million dollars. <laughs> and I good for her. Boom. Yes. Yes. Boom. Yes. Okay. And all he had to do was keep his little tiny, thin lipped mouth shut. Yep. But he can't. So she got money. Let me, let, me, let, let me rephrase it. All he had to do is keep his tiny, thin lip orange. Yeah. Orange. It's orange orange getting oranger shirts. by the day so he's such that an unattractive e. man gene carroll e gene carroll boom yo boom. okay okay i she tries to weasel out of paying the money i hope she get like says he's so rich i'm richer than everyone my, my uh-huh. trump impression is Same. terrible me too okay um but like so he's always like how do these women look dude have you, do you have a mirror? Like, you're not an attractive man. You've never been an attractive man. No. Apparently, when he was younger, he was like, I'm a young Robert Redford. In what universe? I don't... I have don't, you seen? I don't, sometimes people's, like, character signs so through that, like, if there was an attractive quality about him, like, I could never, ever see it. I was always like, ew, gross. Well but before he, he was a political person. Have, have, has he seen young Robert Redford? Because young Robert Redford, Damn, I don't know. Is mm-hmm. oh mm-hmm. man, mm-hmm. man, yes, man. I see you in mm-hmm. at Sundance. Oh, when he, when mm-hmm. you, when you walk into that room and the camera finds him at the table. Oh, yeah, I will do him favors. I will do him yes. so many favors. The um, way we were. Mm-hmm. Come on, mm-hmm. come on, mm-hmm. all present as men. Even in that, he may be in a reporter and a nurse, sexy. And I'm not usually in the. Yeah. Uh, Blind eyes like that, unless they Brad Pitt or yeah, uh, but even Brad Pitt's Thor. like slightly brown haired. Uh, <laughs> what's what's just the guy from Australia, Thor? Uh, what's his name? Oh, what's his Chris face? Hemsworth? Mm. Yeah, yeah, that no, big I'm not ass mad at neck. Him. Yes, like, but Robert Young Robert Redford, Trump thought he looked anything. Mm-mm. He looked like Mm-mm. Young Robert Redford's thumb. That's what that motherfucker <laughs> looked like. <laughs> he almost got to play with Young Robert Redford. <laughs> Because young Robert Redford was fine. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I remember being a teenager and seeing, I don't remember which one, but I was like, oh my God, who's that? I remember being like six or seven, like really, really oh, wow. young and being like, oh my God, he's so cute. Like, because you know, when you're that young, oh, yeah. you don't know. And then I get a little bit older and I was like, oh, that's why I like, yeah. And then I, I mm. rewatched like uh, Butch Cassidy, Cassidy and the Sundance Kid as a grown ass woman. I was like, oh, I got the vapors. Okay. <laughs> Well, I got a little bit older. It's like, this is why women used to throw their panties on stage. Mm-hmm. Like, I get it. I get it. Yeah. Young Robert Redford, this motherfucker thing, he thought he thought Mm-mm. he looked like younger. Mm-mm. Yeah. Mm-mm. He obviously didn't own no mirrors. Like They have a lot of people that they pay to tell him lies. That's the only explanation I can think of. And it's like, even if you look like Robert Redford and you are sleazy, the alleged, like, sex offender... <laughs> You're not sexy anymore. Yeah, no, seriously. Like, character shines through, and I'm like, yeah, now you're ugly. Mm. Yeah, but young, also, the, the yeah. delusion's not sexy. Like, delusion is not hot. 
It's you can not quote me hot. on that. <laughs> but thank you for sharing E. Jean Carroll's story. Like I, I think that's just so amazing. But I, I just find it ironic that she was such an adventurous spirit, and in in these like scenarios that would yeah. on the surface give me much anxiety. I could never do what she did. That no. in these dangerous, embedded with these dangerous or you know potentially uh, unsafe conditions, and she gets assaulted in an elevator with a rich uh, executive. Uh, entertainment executive and in an uh, upscale department store with a purported like real estate mogul, like yeah. upper class. She's unsafe with these, the men that society says should be right, should you be. know, protectors. So, y'all, women. money and class don't protect anything like in terms of that. They protect your investments. That's it. Exactly. And predators are always about like, you know, opportunity. Yeah. um, And access to people. And because they are, especially if they are powerful, they tend to have more access than the average person. Right. Like, (sighs) just like, and also I I just, it it makes my skin crawl how that changed. Right. So you meet up with somebody that you casually know socially. Right. And you think this is a reputable businessman and he's like, oh, I'm buying this present for uh, a girlfriend or whatever or why, whatever. And you're thinking when they mention the wife or the girlfriend, you're thinking you're safe, right? Yep. So you're helping that relationship. Yeah. yeah and it's like a hat yeah. or a purse. So then you're talking and then it it, ta- it turns to like, oh, lingerie, ha ha. But you're not thinking because your guard is down. And again, you're in a public upscale yeah. department yeah. store. Right. Which is which is where which is where the power play happens. Yeah. It also you shows know? you how like um, you know, you can never get into the mind of a person, but it also shows you how the game is played. Right. Because Ugh, they don't yeah. people think of like assault like, oh, it's a stranger in a dark out. Right. Like or like it's a mm-hmm. scary person, usually a man who like frightens a woman and holds a gun up to her head and. All this other stuff. No, it happens like that where you feel safe. And you know what? Your guard is down. Yeah. I will say this. And it happens quickly. It happens quickly. What I love about her so much is that she knows she could not let him continue to go through life without somehow acknowledging and paying for his crime. She, it was not in her to let it slide, even though. Her name was on the front of my newsfeed for like seven days in a way that I'm sure she was not appreciative of. Right. Right. But that and that's why like that's why I was like, OK, let's get her name. Let's get her her world like let's round it out. So she's but but give her the credit for standing up and fighting for oh, what's yeah. right for everyone. Like, yes, girl, I love you. And, and you know, also, I believe that. Uh, anger is an underrated uh, emotion, especially for women. Um, she got mad because she probably was like, I'm going to let it go. So he's going to get his comeuppance. And then this motherfucker. So not only do do they uh, assault you, attack you, then this motherfucker wants to, dry, d- to drag your name through the mud by assaulting your looks, mm-hmm. your intelligence, yep. uh, ridiculing you. It's not even gaslighting because she's not buying into it, but she's like, motherfucker, keep my name out your motherfucking mouth. Uh, that sounds familiar. Right? You get <laughs> angry, and I feel like a part of her is like, she got angry because he still got her name in his mouth. I'm getting, I'm, I'm, I'm doing that street talk. Motherfucker, yeah. keep my name out your mouth. Oh, we gonna do that? Okay, so, all right, bet. Let's do this. Oh, so I, listen, do you remember the First Wives Club? Do you oh, remember yeah, the it. last scene when Ivanka Trump walks in <laughs> and says, don't get mad, get everything. everything. And yes. she did. She got $5 million. Yes. So, you know, I just find yeah. that like beautiful, a beautiful all karma. Because, and all because he wouldn't just shut his mouth. Like it yeah. kind of reminds me of like my girl, Megan The Stallion, uh, who oh, yeah. got some justice finally. That little gremlin five foot motherfucker. She was going to let it go, even though he shot her because you're like, this is rap part of the game. I'm a-. He kept bringing, keeping Meg's yep. name in his motherfucking mouth. Try, not only did she let him off slide, he slide. He should have been like, like on that on the the, the released 
uh, uh, phone call that was released after the trial. He should have just been like, oh, my God, she oh, she did me a solid. I'm going to do right by her. I'm going to keep my mouth shut. No, Meg wasn't even saying anything publicly. His little uh, limp dick ass is the one that kept bringing up and kept keeping Meg's name in his mouth. So not only did he want to assault her physically, he also wanted to publicly humiliate her because he's a man, she's a woman, and fuck that bitch. And And Meg's like, all right. So she's like, I'm going to report you. And then it's the district attorney is like, oh, this motherfucker is, he went on live bragging about it because it's not enough for them to assault you they have to brag about it and get dapped up from other equally abusive uh animals and he and i said animal because men who Mm -hmm. or people who assault people who are physically weaker than them and then try and brag about it and also he got a little like like meg said in her rap uh a punk ass bitch with a punk ass gun Right. Yeah. He waits. He shoots a woman who's walking away from him. Yep. She was gonna let it go, but he kept her his her yep. name in his motherfucking mouth, and I was like, "All right, bet." And now he has been convicted guilty on all three counts, and his ass is going to jail. This could have been avoided if he had just sat there, ate his motherfucking rice, and kept his name kept kept her name out of his motherfucking mouth. I'm sorry, well, I'm preaching, but I'm, I'm pissed. Okay. Yeah. Anger, ladies. Or fans, anger, don't ever let people make you ashamed or try and uh, embarrass you about being angry. Sometimes you need to get angry to fight back because these yep. motherfuckers, because what abusers love to do is to keep abusing. Mm-hmm. And things that they don't understand. Well, you know, one thing they understand, not having freedom, not being yeah. alive. Yeah. Because you know me, I'm all about like, like, kick a motherfucker down, down the steps. Like, I'm all about... <laughs> <laughs> sometimes the you Lord's Claiborne is one of my favorite movies of all time sometimes a motherfucker need to fall in the well I'm just saying I mean, like sometimes he need to fall in the well listen I allegedly agree with that statement you just made it's alleged but it but I agree allegedly I mean sometimes yeah. your leg just like flips out and the motherfucker's on the ground what are you gonna do I mean too late. sometimes you drink too it's much falling. beer and you fall down the well. Uh, uh, sometimes you fall on a. Uh, sometimes you fall on a knife. Yeah, accidents just Sometimes happen. you fall fall on it over yeah. and over and over again. I mean, mm, you know, it happens. I uh, I know people are like Lavette is crazy. Listen, I am it's a fine. sweetheart. No, I just she's the nicest clear. person. But don't piss her off. I. But when people when people abuse you, and it's yeah. not enough for them mm-hmm. to abuse you and assault you. But then they have to humiliate you on top of the humiliation from being assaulted. Yep. Yep. I have no pity for these motherfuckers. Mm -mm. See, this is why I shouldn't be in charge, because if I was a monarch, everybody (laughs) everybody got to die. Burn them all. Yeah. No. (laughs) Like, I mean, you know, I mean, there'd be no justice system. That in three or five years, like, let's cut off some balls. I mean, you know. (laughs) (laughs) On that note, should we end this? (laughs) Parents like Lizetta would try to get more subscribers, not get yeah. rid of them. But I just get passionate because well, these listen, guys. I'm not disagreeing. <laughs> it's just the audacity. People have just pure audacity. I know, girl. To abuse you. People have yeah. no shame. Yeah. Some people have no shame. So Sometimes I you gotta to do run. what you gotta do. All right. We should probably go. For go. Her. I mean. <laughs> I mean, I love this episode because we had one lady who was uh, raping and murdering and, and pulling out hearts. And then right. another lady yeah. who stood up to <laughs> an abuser. That's what this you is get a here, good right? one. Solid. Uh, yes. <laughs> notorious women. Sometimes okay. the women are horrific like Magdalena and sometimes yeah. they're heroic like E. Jean Carroll. So that's right. Uh, on that note, I guess we will wrap it up. Uh, please come back, even though I went on a rant. Uh, yeah, no, please. I got, I got wild. Listen, up. listen. No one loves your rants more than me. So <laughs> she's like, and I'm seeing if people wonder why I'm single still. Oh, no, no, it's fine. She's beautiful. You guys, she's beautiful. Okay. No, it's, I know it's you can't like see her on our Instagram, but I have high standards because if a man is like, but Tory Lanez, uh, no, no, mm. we're not doing this plan. Mm. No, Mm-mm. no. So, uh, 
And uh, I'm so All proud right. that wrapped it up for <laughs> another episode of Notorious Women Podcast. Uh, guys, remember to follow us on all the things. Please give us a five star review on Apple. Uh, it really helps. And or, you know, like and subscribe us on your pod catcher of choice, whether that be iHeartRadio, Spotify, Stitcher, I, Apple Podcasts, what have you, wherever you find us. Please subscribe and also copy the link for the show and send it to your friends and loved ones to share yes. the show because uh, we are trying to grow and let me know if you like my rant or if you want me to tamp down and, and be more submissive uh, I don't know if I could do that what but, no mm -mm. Uh, yeah. but mm -mm. Hey, I can rant more trust me but I just yes you, you know can. I was triggered <laughs> I was triggered today so but uh, we do appreciate all of your support thank you to our patrons if you want to support us on patreon uh, and become a patron uh, please follow us at or go to patreon.com slash notorious women. That's P A T R E O N dot com slash notorious women. And Miriam will tell you where to find us with IG. Yes. So on places. Instagram, we are just notorious women podcast. Please to come and enjoy. I have lots of fun there. There's some funny things as well as some funky things. Um, and uh, if you want to email us, our email is notoriouswmpod at gmail.com. Uh, so you can send us an email. You can also DM on the Instagram if you want. Both yep. work very, very well. Yeah, and come and tell us. Uh, and you know, maybe tag us in some things and share, you know, maybe some uh, posts that you want us to uh, oh, weigh yeah. in on or, or repost and let us know because... And again, this this is Notorious Women, but that includes femmes as well. Yes. Uh, so we are two cis women, so we kind of stay in our lane. But we always love, you know, to give a shout out to um, other femmes and our trans sisters. And, yes. you know, we're all inclusive here on this show. Uh, so we just want to put that out there. If you're a dighead or if you are transphobe or a bigot, yeah, we don't really want you to subscribe. No, that is not yeah. how we roll. Uh, you would, yeah. You'll find evidence of that on our Instagram page, in fact. Exactly. Uh, yes. So, all right. On that note, we will see you guys next week. Bye bye. bye.